Welcome to CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Tournament. It's the Elite Eight. Today's game is between the Georgetown Hoyas and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And of course, Bill, our starting five. These two studs at the power forward spot deserve extra attention, Gus. They usually play hard and play well, so keep an eye on them. And before we tip off, let's see what these two sides are going to be focusing on today. The Hoyas control the tip, and the floor is underway. On the right side. They'll start from the baseline. Shots up, down the lane. Finger roll, so easy for this guy. The Golden Gophers set up for a round one. That's tough because guys can make shots and yet they can penetrate and kick. Call for the foul. Let's get another look at the layup. You've got to make these inside ones, Gus. They're high percentage shots. they just got to be completed. The Golden Gophers now looking to run their stuff against this zone. And what they do is put it on the deck, creating a pinch, and then find the open guy. And no! Breaks it off the rim. Offensive pull. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, thanks for joining us tonight. Gus Johnson here alongside Bill Rafter. Out on the left wing. The Golden Gophers now running a zone offense. The impact very similar to their man-to-man. -man. They find the open guy. Once again, a case of being too aggressive defensively. There's nothing wrong with being aggressive, but you just gotta know when to back off. This is a snapshot of what he's been bringing to the table each night. Gus, you can see where the numbers are at. But like any competitor you know, this kid wants to continue to improve and find new ways to help his team win. No good. Grabs the rebound. Inside. He can't get it to go. Give it here. Looking for a good shot. Up and in. Ha ha! You always want your players going hard to the basket like that. Wouldn't you agree, Coach? Wow, Gus, when you drive it with the authority, only good things happen. Drives like that usually end up with a basket and or a foul. They work it around the perimeter. He shoots from the corner and misses. The Hoyas running their zone offense. Now this particular offense is extremely tough because they get into the high-low look. They work the perimeter. He attempts the trifecta, and he gets it. This guy is a complete player in the post. Because he's definitely what I call a complete post-up player. He can do so many different things and really demand your attention on the defensive end. Just an outstanding talent and prospect.
And we're back, ready to get things going again after the timeout. Fires. Shots off. Oh, physical play. On the right side. He looks for three. They work the perimeter. Takes the medium-range jump shot. Squared up on the catch. Got his puppies in order. They work it around the perimeter. Dials up a long-range shot. Not this time. On the wing. The Golden Gophers running their zone offense. Very effective because of the power on the glass. Shot rejected. They're at the eight minute mark. On the left side. He shoots from the corner. Off the glass. Dump it inside. And they get the turnover. Now on the run. Do they need a timeout here, Rat? Gus, they definitely need a timeout. They've lost their composure. They work it around the perimeter. Ah, he got it up and in. The Hoyas set up into their zone motion offense. And this is difficult because they understand how to take advantage of mismatches. Ooh, athlete. We are at the seven minute mark. Now they work it around the perimeter. It's our call for the foul. Let's go back and look at this one again. He knows what to do, and he gets the job done. With disdain to the 10. Coach, I realize we're still in the first half, but you can't perform like this during tournament games. If they don't watch it, they may get blown out. Well, I tell you what, Gus, it's about surviving and advancing. It's tough to stay close when you allow the opposition to get a double-digit lead early in the first half. The Golden Gophers working, changing it up against the zone. And that's what makes them tough to defend. They understand how to take advantage of openings. Out on the right wing. He unloads the three. No luck from downtown. Shots off. They should look to push it now. A little woo-woo, Gus. The Hoyas now looking to run their stuff against this zone. And what they do is put it on the deck, creating a pinch, and then find the open guy. The Hoyas look to execute their offense. Uh, Princeton offense is very difficult. It tests your patience. It makes you stay in position. Uh, they're tough to rattle, Gus. They've got the ability to back cut if you overplay and pop out and make the three. We are at the six-minute mark. The Hoyas, and they're in their motion offense, working with four around one. Well, if you have a big guy that can find people, it really puts a lot of pressure on the D. Way out on the right wing. Put a little English on it. He was determined to get to the rim. A nice job getting to the hole. A gutsy take. I like that mentality. On the left side. In the lane. No. Goes up high with two hands. Watch out. Bam. The Golden Gophers did a great job of going through the high post on that play. They got the ball to the big guy at the high post, and the D just couldn't react in time, Gus. That's often the case when the ball goes into that area of the court. We're at the five-minute mark. Out on the left wing. In the lane, with 10 to shoot now. In 
in the post. Jump shot. A soft move. Nice low post play. Good entry down into the box. The guile, the fortitude to pursue the rim. Dump it inside. The Golden Gophers now running a zone offense. The impact very similar to their man-to-man. -man. They find the open guy. We're at the four-minute mark. On the left side. Fires and answers. This guy is a real talent, a great passer and scorer. This kid really does a good job of reading the D and seeing the whole floor. And he loves to give it up. He really does a good job of scoring as well. Takes the medium range jump shot. He missed it. Offensive rebound. And a tip in. Those are effort points, no blockout. Those will kill you, capitalizing on miscues. The Hoyas running their zone offense. Now, this particular offense is extremely tough because they get into the high-low look. We're at the three-minute mark. They work it into a double team in the post. In the lane. And he can't get the bounce. On the wing. And he's fouled. You know, Raph, this guy has really elevated his game. As a coach, Cuss, it's always a bonus when players step up. He'll continue to be a nightmare for this defense if they don't change things up. On the left side. Jump shot. Off the mark. Rebound and run. The Hoyas motion for around one. Understanding what type of shot you want is essential in this offense. Way out on the right wing. In the lane. He can't get it to go. Snatches the rebound. Out on the right wing. We are at the two-minute mark. On the left side. First personal foul. Obviously too aggressive here defensively. You really got to know your limitations, Gus. Seniors are tough to come by these days. But when you have a few of them on your roster, it really helps from a coaching standpoint. They know what's expected of them, and they're most likely to deliver. He gets it to go. He got them both. on the way. He tries the three. Big time. No. Takes the rebound. Fires with the sweet kiss. Around a minute remaining. They work the perimeter. He lets it go. Perfect.
the Hoyas set up into their zone motion offense. And this is difficult because they understand how to take advantage of mismatches. On the left side. The sophomore. You always want your players going hard to the basket like that. Wouldn't you agree, Coach? Wow, Gus, when you drive it with authority, only good things happen. Drives like that usually end up with a basket and or a foul. Total control. Knows where to be. Location. A high rent district. Way out on the right wing. Lots of room. And hits. With the first half in the books, we're now ready for the road to the final four. Stay tuned. Here is a look at how the numbers stack up for each team here today. Let's check in and take a look at how both sides are doing with the keys to the game. Coach, you talked about the pressure of NCAA tournament play, and here it is in the second half, and you know it's building on both of these teams. One thing that separates who can march on and win six in a row from those who can is the ability to handle pressure. The ability to play with poise and be able to finish games is extremely important. On the right side. Jump shot. The junior. Out on the left wing. Blocked. Stolen. On the right side. He missed it. Rips down the board. Looking for a good shot. The Hoyas. And now getting set up. Four around one. If you don't help out, they just kill you. Ten on the shot clock. On the outside. He drains the bucket. Dump it inside. He fires from long range, and he is no good from downtown. Now they work it around the perimeter. He shoots from the corner, misses from the outside. Court. The Golden Gophers running their zone offense. Very effective because of the power on the glass. It opens up that opportunity for tips. He attempts the three. Outside, Jay won't go. It's all about shot selection, Gus. It's so important to take good shots and not necessarily the shot the defense wants you to take. He doesn't get the hoop to fall. He shoots from the deep corner. Can't put it down.
on the outside. Can finish. The Hoyas working, changing it up against the zone. And that's what makes them tough to defend. They understand how to take advantage of openings. Around eight minutes remaining on the game clock. And lays it in. Now that's taking it strong to the rim, isn't it? That's a great take, strong to the 10. That puts incredible pressure on the D when you go to the hoop like that. They work the perimeter. From the corner! He can't get the bucket to fall. in the post. And he lays it up and in. And that one is blocked. On the wing. Down the lane. Finger roll. So easy. Way out on the right way. Off the mark with the shot. Loose ball saved. Strips the ball. Pushing in transition. He shoots from downtown. He misses from beyond the arc. Inside. Six minutes left on the game clock. Out on the wing. Strip. Active hands. The Hoyas in a hurry. Good. Gotta love a player who can consistently knock down that mid-range jumper. They work it into a double team in the post. In the lane. And he can't get the bounce. Can't get it to go. Up and in. <laughs> We're at the five minute mark. On the left side. He gets that one to fall. Bill, the first half was ugly, and now the second half is shaping up to be a one sided affair as well. This one's basically a done deal. Well, it's not going to change. They jumped on them right away. They executed. They came out and played with a purpose. It's unfortunate the other club just didn't follow suit. I hate to say it, but I think this one is over. Dump it inside. Looking for the bomb. Can't connect from the three-point line. On the right side. He throws it up from downtown. Nails it from downtown. Four minutes left on the game clock. Get it down on the low block. He doesn't get the hoop. Shots off. Pulls down the board. Out on the way.
fires. He gets the shot to fall. Looking for a good shot. First team foul. Once again, a case of being too aggressive defensively. There's nothing wrong with being aggressive, but you just gotta know when to back off. And there are his per game numbers. You can see there what you can expect from him on the statue. But I'm sure his coach knows everything else that this young man gets done each and every game. Makes the shot. running their stuff. Uh, painful. You're on a defensive end, you get tired. They're so deliberate. We're at the three-minute mark. The shot clock down to ten. On the right side. Jump shot. How about that, Gus? And after the timeout, we're all set to pick things up. Way out on the right wing. In the lane. You bet. Mistake there. They work the perimeter. He shoots from the corner. And he buries the long range bomb. Two minutes left on the game clock. Out on the right wing. Shots up, misses from long range. Out on the wing. He takes the three. He misses from downtown. Obviously too aggressive here defensively. You really gotta know your limitations, Gus. Here we have a look at one of the sophomores for this team. Gus, he's young, but he's been through his freshman year and he's learned a lot. This is going to be another big season for him. Let's see how he does today. Got to make the freebies, Billy. Makes the foul shot. on the left wing. With 10 to shoot on the shot clock. He can't get the hoop to fall. Around a minute remaining. He shoots from the right of the circle. Comes up empty from deep. On the left side. He shoots from the corner. Off the mark. Snatches it down. Way 
out on the right wing. He puts up the tray, and he makes the three. Picks off that lazy pass. Here they go in transition. He shoots from the corner. It's good. On the right side. With the big shot. And he's no good from downtown. We've said it so many times, survive and advance. Well, one survived and will advance. The other one's going home. Well, when you take a close look at this victory, it came down to execution. We say it all the time, but these guys did a terrific job of getting stops at the defensive end and scores at the offensive end. That's our coverage of NCAA basketball on CBS Sports. I'm Gus Johnson for Bill Raftery saying good night, and we'll see you next time.